the, the best thing to do, John, is just if you could give some people a bit of context, I guess, like who you are, where you're from and, you know, uh, yeah, like how did you, how did you get into this position, I guess? Um, well, first off, John Megason, I am located in Seattle, Washington. Um, it's a funny story, actually, like how all this started, Mike, like it was during the pandemic. So during COVID 2020 is when all this happened. Um, it's funny, I started off doing commercial modeling and, you know, when COVID hit, that kind of stopped and there was no jobs for like photographers or anything doing photo shoots. And at the time, my agent who I signed with was like, you should try out acting. And I wasn't so sure about it. I've always been kind of a quiet to myself type of person. Um, wasn't really an outgoing individual. And so I said, why not? Let's just give it a try and see. And so I started doing like monologues and scenes in my bathroom and like trying to figure things out. Because, you know, at the time, like the whole industry yeah. was pretty much shut down. So I had to like navigate and figure things out on my own. Like literally, like I had no idea what I was doing. So I started reading a lot of books and I was working on monologues, like one monologue a week and I would upload it to YouTube and then I would put it on Facebook for people to see. So like if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see from like January 2020 all the way for the whole year, I had one monologue, one monologue a week that I was working on. And so I started reading this book called The Actor's Guide um, by Jenna Fisher. If you've ever seen The Office, she played Pam. Um, she has a book out that pretty much explains everything about the industry and the ins and outs and things that you need to know, like how to navigate and stuff that you should know, yeah. like, you know, headshots and reels and all that good stuff. Um, so I started doing that. And then um, I went to this actor showcase in LA called IMTA with my agency. It was a week long convention where, you know, actors come out and they showcase and they perform in front of like, you know, agencies and agents all over the world. And I did that week competition and they had a thing, you know, callbacks. They had callbacks for, agent, for agents day and I didn't get any callbacks from there. Um, well, I had, no, I'm sorry, I had about four callbacks, but I didn't get signed with any of the people I call, uh, callbacks from. So I came back and I really started to dig deeper into, into the craft and trying to figure out like what I wanted to do and like what kind of actor I wanted to be. And the one thing that I really discovered about the industry is like being consistent, patient, and really dedicating yourself to the craft. Um, so I spent every single day you know, working on whether it was monologues or scenes, um, just putting myself out there pretty much. Because when this, when COVID ended, I was, I literally threw myself into the water and just started auditioning and doing things and putting myself out there, which I can understand can be difficult for some. Um, but it was a risk. You know, this industry, mm -hmm. you have to take risks and nothing is ever guaranteed yeah. for what we do. Um, so that was the start of it. And i I went for my first audition in March of 2020, and I booked my first part in a short film. Um, it was called Operation Y2K. Um, that was my very first film. And after that, I mean, to be honest, it was kind of like a fast forward, like a blur from there. Everything kind of just like all came at me at once and just started to, to click. And I just, the one thing I always preach about this is just like, you have to be what most people aren't. Hmm. is consistent yeah i want to get into that because like you never set out to be an actor right and there's two things that that really that really jump out at me is no. that you never set out to be an actor and then also while everybody was kind of locked up with covid you seem to be you seem to be getting busier than ever like when we we're coming out of covid you seem to be in push like i'll so I must say, like, because I'm from our, I'm in Ireland and you're in, in, you're in Los Angeles, right? And we came across each other on Facebook. And at first you were like, you were pushing out, you're in this, you're in that, and you're in that. And I'm going, is this real? But then, you know, you find out it is real, right? It, it is, you're in a lot of stuff. And, it, and that's why I said you, your acceleration is, is inspiring, right? Because a lot of actors, you know, they're trying to get into this for years. They put themselves through drama school like me, right? And it takes a long time, right? And for you, it just, it just, it's just happening and it's great to see it, right? And I wonder like, I wonder like what, 
what is the secret or what is it you you think that you did or that you're doing that other people just aren't doing so it's a it's a weird thing yeah you're right i never wanted to be an actor like that was like it never crossed my mind at all until 2020 and um one thing i noticed is like when covid happened everyone kind of took a step back it was like yeah trying to do other things or you know whatever it was they had to do and i took that as an opportunity to to work on my craft and accelerate while the industry was shut down and so i took i took a bit to um try to try to think out of the box you know do things differently in ways that other people don't so i was using every resource i had i mean i was signing up on backstage actor access and i would literally sit for like two three hours a day and literally right, just search right, right. search search and find 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 any any job i could and submit 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 and it's funny you said that because I didn't realize, like, I thought what I was doing was, like, normal, like, booking jobs yeah. and staying busy. I thought that was, like, a normal thing. I didn't take it as, like, it was not normal. I thought it was just, you know, that's how the industry works. And at the end of at the end of the 2020, my first year, I ended up with 11 yeah, films. Crazy. That, that doesn't, that I finished doesn't with, happen, the end right? of 2020. That's just crazy, um, right? And now that I look at it, I'm like, that is kind of, is, is it crazy, though? I don't know. I just felt like I just, I have a hunger. I have a real hunger for like if I set my mind to do something I want to do it I'm I've never been the type to like try something like when I first said I was going to do this it's like okay I'm going to do this this is what I'm going to do I'm going to do whatever it takes and so I would literally like Facebook groups I'd go Facebook groups and and post and find local filmmakers I signed up for IMDb Pro and I think this is one thing that I've seen that worked a lot so like I would watch TV shows right and I would wait for the credits to see like who's the casting yeah. director for this so I'd wait for the, I'd, I'd fast forward for the casting director. I'd go to IMDb Pro. I'd find their email and I would just send emails out to every casting director that I could find, filmmakers everywhere. Even if I didn't get emails back, which 99% of the time, I yeah. didn't ever get anything back. But there was like those little opportunities that I did get emails back, like, you know, for background stuff or like one, two liners or whatever it may be. Um, so I started, you know, networking and networking and networking. And I think that in, that's like the main thing that I tell people is like networking is like the key, like knowing people. Um, social media is a big presence. Like I know I post a lot on Facebook and Instagram and I always tell people, you know, like you never yeah. know who's watching. So let's, let's dissect that a bit. Let's, let's you dissect that a bit because that I think is your strong, po yeah. your strong point. Right. And it's, it's where a lot of actors, uh fail or not fail but they you know they criticize themselves too much but you're like i i feel that is a, that's a part of your success story i think i think you use those those tool i think you use them as a great tool you used it the way it's supposed to be used right and i, I think that us as actors we fear we fear putting ourselves right. out there so i want i want to ask you so like what's what's the I guess is there a content plan or is there a social media plan or is it just like how do you how do you work that or how do you structure that because you're like i remember i'll remember right you you had your your was it your facebook or your instagram hack taken away you you started again and you're still you're climbing again to thousands of followers oh i i yeah so i my instagram did get hacked but i got, oh, you got it, it back I right, got right it back. okay okay yes i got it back yes um but no like you said i mean like you know, I understand like a lot of actors, because we're in an industry where we're judged a lot and we're looked at and, you know, people don't understand and they're always talking down on us and like, you know, putting ourselves out there can be a scary thing because you don't know how people are going to, if they're going to like the content or not. Um, but for me, it's like, you know, we have social media for a reason. Use it. Right now is like a big time where like social media is everything, especially during the COVID time. Like that was like perfect for me to start like posting because yeah. What do, what do we do during COVID? Everyone was just on social media the whole time. There was nothing else to do. So I'm like, you know, this is like the perfect time for like people to to like really see what I'm doing. And regardless if they like it or not, because like I'm the type like either you like it or you don't. Like either way, I'm still going to, to post about it. Like because either way, they're going to talk about it. They're going to talk about it. Either it's not good or they're going to talk about it as it's maybe it is good. But either way, it's like this is my social media. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put myself out there regardless <laughs> of what people think. Because... Um, for me, it's like, I, I'm not the type of person who really cares if a person mm. likes me or not. Like, you know, my 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 work is my work. This is what I'm going to use it for. Um, if you don't like it, I mean, you can always unfriend me or unfollow. That's okay. Um, I've, I've even had some people like, you know, 
I used to hate seeing how much you post about stuff. And then after a while, it grew on me. Like I had a person send that to me. I'm like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, okay, so after a while, it, it, it works. But yeah, I mean, social, like you said, social media is a tool and you're supposed to use it. And so I, there's no like content plan or anything. It's more just like, you know, I have something. I'm just going to put the, it out. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll admit as well. Like I really, it was, it, you, were, you were like that guy, right? Who just kept knocking on the door. And I'm like, fuck, I got to answer the door, right? I got to yeah. check this guy out, right? And I'm going, fuck, he is the real yeah. deal, right? He's, he's not talking shit. Like, he's backing it up, right? Like, and I think one of the beautiful things about what you're doing is I really like the way that nothing is below you. Like, you're a champion and you're, ch you're cheering that you've got a short film and then you're cheering you got a feature and you're going back to a short. Like, everything is a, a great success for you and you, 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 you know, you push that on social media. So I think that's a great thing as well, you know? And then it kind of, it really does force people, like it really does force them to go, all right, I gotta check this out, right? Because this guy is not going anywhere. And that's how I felt. And that's how I came across you. I don't know how we became friends, but yeah, it was just like, yeah, that's all I can say is you, you just force people to check you out, I guess. And is that what you're finding? yeah and it's been like and like for me it's like i post these things because like i i want so i'm, I'm in seattle washington i'm not in los angeles yet, yet but my my reps are in los angeles my whole thing is just like you know there's a quote i live by from denzel denzel washington says if you hang around the barbershop long enough eventually you'll get yeah. a haircut yeah 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 you know so it's for me it's like you know i'm i'm still here waiting and i'm still here waiting and i'm still here waiting and i'm still here knocking and I'm going to keep knocking until somebody kicks me out or tells me no. And I'm just going to keep knocking at this door until it opens. And that's what I'm still continuing to do. And like while I'm doing this, I'm hoping it just shows people like if you can just stay patient and continue to work and just continue to do what you're supposed to do, eventually that door mm -hmm. will open. So no matter where you live, no matter where you come so from. So those, do those doors that keep up. Because everyone thinks yeah, like, go. Oh, I was gonna say like I was gonna say like because everyone thinks like you have to be in like Los Angeles or New mm -hmm. York and like to make these things happen and it's like that's not true like you don't have to. It's just do you want it like how bad do you want it and what are you willing to do to make it happen? Are you willing to take the risks? Are you willing to put in the work? Like are you willing to do these things? Because if you are, that door will open for you eventually. Yeah, I think that's true. And, and those doors that keep opening, like for like, I mean, I'm curious because like we're in the same position, right? I'm curious how you go about it because I'm very ambitious and I'm very, uh, I'm very driven as well. So I, I'm wondering what's like, how is everything true? Your agent that you're getting, or is it true? Is one job leading to the next or to the next? Because it seems to be, I've checked out your IMDB and it seems to be like, it's been a crazy year like you've got stuff you've got four or five projects in post-production already like are you yeah. are you reaching out to directors and to casting as you said you are emailing cast directors or, or how is that work coming in so much work coming in this is all self books like from the first day i started till now every single all project self film i have has been through me so, shit yeah wow. they're all self books none of, none of my none of my work has came through my agency shit. it's all self books and that comes from networking and reaching out to filmmakers. So I'll send like, I'll go on Facebook and find different groups and like, oh, there's a casting call. I'll email the director. Hi, my name is John Megason. I'm a, I'm a Seattle based actor. Um, I would just love the opportunity to send my portfolio, like for an opportunity to audition for a film, um, whatever role you see might fit for me, I'll audition for. Um, and I'll send that to all filmmakers, no matter where they are. And like, and it's just networking, networking, networking. And then when I'm on set, it's the same thing. You know, like I always just try to make friends with people. I just like to make friends. And so whenever I'm on yeah. set, I'll network and ask like, hey, you know, like, cool. You know, like maybe we can connect sometime on social media. And I've actually had like casting directors um, reach out to me from Instagram based off hashtags of my content that I post. Like I, um, I you know, Eric Roberts. Yeah, yes, I heard the name. Uh, he's Julia Roberts' uh, yes, Julia Roberts' the, brother. With, he was in like Grey's Anatomy and like Dark Knight. The perfect gray hair. Yes, the gray yes, hair, yes, the glasses. Yes. Yeah. So 
I got reached out by a director last year who kept, he said he kept seeing me on Facebook and he was like, I had to reach out. He offered me a role to do a movie that was narrated and voiced over by Eric Roberts. So I got to do a movie with him. And the cool thing about it is I didn't even have to leave anywhere. I did it all from where I am here. So, which was cool. And then after that, it was like, you know, with IMDb stuff, stuff starts getting connected and then like had another director reach out. I was like, Hey, I saw you with this one. And it kind of just became like a domino effect. And I was just like, Whoa, like what is going on right now? And then all of a sudden it was just like stuff just started flooding in like out of nowhere. So I was like, Holy shit. Like, okay, this is like, this is working. So yeah. keep, keep doing what I'm doing. And like, Going, going back to like your social media thing, like one thing that I do is like I will pre, I'll pre make content ahead of time and save it in my draft. And depending, because you know, social media, posting on social media is like oh, another job. It's, yeah, it's time consuming. Like it's a lot of work. So like I'll pre make stuff ahead of time and have to figure out like what time and day to post it to make it work and to be seen the most. So I had to like figure out the algorithm of like how to make certain posts work and get seen by certain people and i'll send it out and the funny thing is i'll send my stuff out to like other actors and directors on instagram like i'll keep dming my work and keep sending it to them until they read it right like i've had i've had connections with a couple uh a and b listers on instagram who follow me now just because how much how many times i've sent them my stuff and now that's, they watch yeah, that's which crazy is, like <laughs> for anybody listening that's an actor like they that's something to like that's something that i push as well and that i find a lot of actors don't do is they they say right i've got an agent now you know everything's good the agent's going to get me work if you go and look at john's credits oh. his credits is unbelievably long and he just said i got all of them by myself like you're a, you're 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 a, you're a um you're an agent's dream right to work with because it's a collaboration you know what i mean it's not the agent it working is. for you. It's a collaboration. So that's something that's, that's something gold to remember. And there's, and there's a reason why they only get paid 20 percent. You got to put in that work like there's only so much they can do. But for me, though, I guess like because I get that. But for me, I'm not the type of person to sit yeah. and wait like just because I have an agent like doesn't mean like I can just work's just going to come. I still got to put in that work. And I've always had this like because growing up, I didn't. I didn't have much growing up, so I, I've had to like hustle my whole life. So the hustle and grind isn't anything new to me. Um, I come from a single parent household, you know, my single mom and two sisters growing up, and we didn't have much. So I had to grow up young. So transitioning life into this is like the hustle and grind is like what I know. Like no one's gonna do anything for you. You got to go get it. So I've always been like, you you want it, you have to go get it yourself. Yeah, totally. Are you a parent as well? I have three three boys. boys yeah so like you've got some motivation behind you you know i've got a little girl so it's it's definitely uh -huh. motivating we, we must be around the same age um How old are i'm you? 36. okay i'm 29. Oh, you're 29. wow yeah. i thought you were a little bit older wow you got three kids and you're 29. How, 29. how old are your kids uh my oldest is seven my youngest is three and my other one's about to oh be two. man you're only young you've got such a long career ahead of you like you're you're going places I, I i i i cheer you on you know what i mean i cheer you on that's great um what about training john have you done much like because uh, this is another thing that really interests me right it's that there's sometimes there's i've got like a love-hate relationship with training because i went to acting school for a very long time and different acting schools and tried different things and the one thing that I learned about doing many different acting schools was that uh, maybe it was probably best not to do acting school, right? Because it gets you very heady. It gets you very in your own way sometimes. Yeah. And I feel that that you can nearly have a looseness to you. Like, how do you feel about like that, about training or, or have you been trained or? I, I haven't been trained and i haven't done any acting classes or anything mm -mm. right and you um but i actually I, tonight, I actually start my first acting class tonight actually it's funny you said that <laughs> i'm finally taking a class tonight yeah um there's a an acting coach that i've been wanting to work with for a while and i think i think it's great for some i think it's great in in different ways like acting classes because you know like they can help you keep your, your auditions fresh mm -hmm. and like show you different techniques and you know 
you know how you can say like one word a thousand times like they, they show you things that could work that i don't know um i think it's great um but i mean for me personally it's like i've been through so much in my life like a lot and i think a lot of it just has to do with life experiences because there's there's stuff that acting classes just can't teach you you know like how to react naturally to certain situations um you know i i i tap into a lot of you know stuff that i've been through as a yeah. kid even as an adult depending on like what role or film it is that helps a lot um i don't have a whole lot of experience when it comes like acting school and classes or i can't really per se like my opinion on it because i haven't really experienced mm -hmm. it um just based off like what i think as far as like techniques and like keeping auditions fresh i think it's good for it that's the reason why i'm taking it like just to help like when i do auditions like to help me do it in different ways and keep it fresh as i can yeah it's uh, look 90 percent of the of the challenge is getting the job booked right um but i think that for me like what i can take away from training especially method training i did method training for a long time is that it doesn't necessarily teach you how to act on set acting on set is different to school training right um i think that i think that like like it's very interesting the way you're going about it right because you're having success on set and now you're going to training when usually it's the other way around right people go through training and then try to get on set so i think that from your dynamic it's very very interesting because when you're in school tra training you don't have the onset experience you know what i mean so you don't know you yeah. don't know what like if you go on to a football pitch to kick a ball you know what you need to practice on because you can't hit the net right whereas you've been on set so you know what you need to do right you know go like this is what i'm really struggling with on set so i think that that's that's a really another advantage for you so that's that's a pretty good uh, well who's the acting teacher you're going to study with oh uh, his name's brian sutherland brian sutherland okay i don't know you'll probably see on facebook too he's he's friends with a lot of people he's in everything that guy's in everything so i'm like i need to learn from him he's like one of the best actor coaches and actors that i've seen so i'm like so it's an honor and like i'm really excited to like be able to learn and grow because you know this industry we're always learning we're always growing there's always things we can learn yeah. so I'm excited for my first day. Is is yeah. that in person or over Zoom? It's over, over Zoom. Zoom. Like just moving on to I guess auditions. Like, well, you said you're getting everything true from your from reaching out to people. Um, like, what would be your kind of like? I've seen one of your auditions. So you are you put one audition online, and then I actually seen it in the cut of the movie where you take your t-shirt off at the bar, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm just yeah. wondering because yeah. when I seen that, right. I said that t-shirt scene is definitely not in the script that's the actor and i wonder did that get you the job <laughs> yeah it, it did. i knew it right because he was like that means you've got balls he was like do something with your t-shirt yeah that shows that you've got balls as an actor right because we can be very reserved right and i and and not only did that get you the audition maybe if we could try get a clip we could put it up here but or we'll leave a link to your stuff but they actually took it and put it in the movie right and not just any movie. That's yeah. a pretty big movie. That was a big budget movie, right? I've seen the set. Yeah, it was a set. It was a SAG micro budget movie. Yeah, it was a pretty big one. So, and that was my first. That was my very first like big, big one. Right. So, what's your kind of like? I guess like I can I can I know where you're gonna go with it, but what's your kind of advice for those kind of auditions, right? Like taking risks. What's your? Is that naturally to you, or is it like I just gotta go for it? I, I don't know. I take when I do auditions, I just take it as a as opportunity just to have fun and just be free. Like, there's no wrong choice. Yeah, there's no wrong choices. So I kind of just follow my gut. And like, if I feel like if, if I'm like, hmm, should I if I have to double think, like, should I do this? OK, yeah, if, I, I'm going to do it. Like, because what's the what's the worst that's going to happen? He's just going to tell me, no, don't do that. Make another choice. So, I mean. I usually just follow my gut and just go for it because the worst that's going to happen is just like either he's going to tell me it doesn't work or I just won't get I won't get the job. And then it's like, OK, well, on to the next one, because I, 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 I take every audition as a win. If I get an audition, cool, that's a win to me. Booking the job is just like the icing on the cake for me. Yeah. What was that like, that experience like working on that? Because uh, I've seen a bit of that online and I've seen that, that I think there's a mansion involved as well in that movie. Like, what was the experience like working? Yeah, with... that's where we stayed. That's where we stayed at, too. Yeah, that looks pretty, pretty damn sweet. Like, what's the experience like 
or I guess what did you learn with working with those caliper of actors because you had some pretty good actors in that movie like did they give you any advice or we did um yeah so I worked very closely with the director um Steven Sorrentino me and him are actually still good friends to this day um he just gave me advice just to be you be you have fun you know we're all here to you know he gave me like good advice of just like you know if you feel you feel something in your gut as far as a choice say like, go for it and then when we did that bar scene it's like you know for some reason i feel like my character would do this so i you so saw i went put put the shirt around my head <laughs> and like did all this like crazy stuff and like you know i, I just i'm just like a very free spirited person and like if i'm gonna make a choice like either they're gonna like it or they're not gonna like it yeah um so my advice is always just like have fun like i think i think a lot of people like overthink or like take it too seriously and like scared of like making wrong choices but it's like at the end of the day we're really getting paid to just like play dress up that way i think about mm. it we're getting paid to play dress up yeah so why not just have fun with what we're doing because you know if you if you find yourself having fun and this is one thing I found because I used to take auditions very seriously, like very, very serious, spend hours trying to like dissect it and like, you know, certain movements and whatever it may be. And I wasn't booking a lot of work when I was doing that. And then, you know, one day I was like, why am I like finding myself so stressful? Like, why am I so stressed out all the time? And I sat back one day. He's like, no, this is supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to be having fun with this. So from this day forward, every audition I do. I'm just going to have take this as an opportunity to put myself on tape and just have fun. And once I started doing that, that's when like I started booking more. I'm like, oh, and now whenever I do it, like I'll put myself, I'll do a self tape, send it. I'll rip my script up, script up and then just forget about it. Right. I rip my script, throw it away and then just move on. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something like people want to work with fun people. And I, I can relate to what you're saying because I work with uh, I worked with Eric Morris, who's an acting teacher in Los Angeles. He's 93, and he said to me one day, he goes, "Michael, you know you're you're a good actor, but fuck, you stink of desperation." And he was right. He was totally correct. Like I stank of desperation. He goes, "They can smell it. They're like dogs, and yeah. casting directors can smell that, and they don't want nothing to do with it." And I, it made me think because I was like, I was kind of like, you know, I got to get this. I got to get successful. I got to get it done. You know, my, the clock is ticking. Right. And I think when you just, it all, it kind of makes you more tense, really. It doesn't let you be free as an actor, but it, it, it just holds you back. And I think like I'm, what I'm trying to work on now is like what you said is just have more fun with it. Right. And, and if I, yeah. and if I don't get it, I'm okay with not getting I'm okay with not getting it on my terms. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'd rather, completely. I'd rather fail and have fun with it, I guess, or do what I want to do. But like on set, like when you were, work I just want to go back. Cause I'm, I re I was really liked that movie you did on, on, on that one. And I was just wondering like for something so big, like was there nerves and how did you combat nerves or did you just use fun? Like this is fun or this is an opportunity to play dress up yeah i mean like that being my very first like big project like that yeah i was a little nervous but then like i don't know what it is like whenever i get on set like i always just want to like make people laugh and like connect and just like you know have a good time and so like before i go to any set like i always try to like connect with like the crew the crew side of people yeah. and like get them just to laugh and like just you know open up and conversate but the whole nerves thing, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I just take every time I get on set, just have having fun and just like connecting with people. And when I do that, I forget, like, I always forget like, oh yeah, this is work. <laughs> like this is still work, but like we're having fun. We're having fun doing it. Like I, I don't know the whole nerves thing. Like I think I lost that after probably like three or four, like my third or fourth film, I stopped worrying about like, messing up or like you know wanting to do things a certain way and like mm -hmm. and like you know like i said earlier like we're, we're all here playing dress up we're all here just to to make a fun film yeah i know it's big but i always think about it it's just having fun and like uh, this is like you know we're all just like we're like kids again you know like in the backyard like you know just 
doing what we do, what we love. So I, I just take every set I go on as like think of think of it that way, and not like oh, this is like big money and we have to whatever the case may be. But yeah, I just take it as having fun every time. Yeah, I heard a good saying before that actors actors don't get paid to be on set; they get paid to do all the other bullshit, like get the job, wait around, yeah. all that other stuff. On set, we do for free, which is true. Like we do short films yeah. and all that all the time for free right it's all the other bullshit we we, yeah. we get paid for um yeah look man that's like like i hear the advice like it's just like you know like you just got to keep going like but your motivation is like is probably the 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 main thing like that people need to take away from and 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 to keep i guess like to keep keep making noise you know like it's the squeaky hinge gets the oil you know the squeaky door hinge gets the oil yeah like you gotta keep pushing and like I- i've taken some great stuff away from this you know and I-, I i i would say to anybody that's watching it or is thinking about getting to acting or into acting like check out john's stuff and check out his social media because like he's involved in a lot of stuff right and it's, it's a good example to set i think oh yeah oh, oh there's actually i want to talk about one more thing uh i've seen you've been going to schools and talking to the kids like how's that been oh man so yeah i got invited back to my old middle school so my middle school has a drama class and my seventh grade teacher at the time she's the teacher of the drama class so she invited me out to talk to her seventh and eighth graders who are in drama class and it was like the most heartwarming best thing ever like to sit in a class of like these 13 14 year old young actors and actresses who like they had so much like excitement and like drive to like do this and it was just like inspiring to me like i felt like the lucky one to be able to go and like talk to them about it and they had like all these questions and like one of the one of the uh teenage girls went up and performed a monologue in front of me and like she wanted me to critique it and like my teacher like print, my old teacher printed out my headshots and they all wanted like autographs and stuff <laughs> and i'm just like it was such a like it was such an amazing moment that i got to like do something like that because it was like you know when i first started it's funny when i first started like i used to reach out to people for advice on like how to make this thing work and a lot of people would not respond to me of it course. was kind of like they it was like figure it out your own type you know and so i'm like and that's kind of one of the things when I first got into the industry, I never understood like, you know, people not wanting to help each other because they always felt like they're going to take my job or like, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're in competition. Like I never understood that. So like, it's like now I got a chance to like talk to these kids and give them a potential head start because mm-hmm. you never know that they're, I'm like, I could be talking to the next like Denzel or next Leonardo DiCaprio or the next like Steven Spielberg in the room. And you never know, like, you know, and like, I gave them I gave them advice that I wish I knew when I first started. So I'm like giving these kids a head start, a better start than I did. So like, you know, if I can help them in any way, like I'm going to help. And it was so cool. Like, you know, we got to take pictures and just like hang out and bond. And like, you know, I gave them like the process on auditioning and where to find films and the things they need to start and, you know, stuff that they can they can work on now. Um, but yeah, it was like one of the best times. I've Probably like one of the moments I'll never forget. It was such a great time. Yeah, because it kind of makes you feel like you've come like a good circle, right? You've come like, were you a good student? Uh, some would say yes. Others but it, maybe. <laughs> like if you kind of weren't a good student, it's kind of makes it feel fulfilling that you have get to come back and kind of like help, right? You know, there's, yeah. some, there's something yeah. there's something in that that's fulfilling. Um, it was it was it was it was really fulfilling it was just cool just to you know just answer their questions and see the spark in their eyes and the joy and the happiness they had of like listening to me speak and they were like taking notes and like doing all this stuff i'm like this is like it's unbelievable it's really cool to like be able to do that because because you you mentioned something really important that it is it's i think you said it's a tough industry but it's it's it's, or not tough but it's how I would put it, it's a very selfish industry because a lot of people are fighting for the same job and they don't want to tell you anything in case, you know, you take their work when it's not even like that at all. That's only their own, yeah. that's their mind playing on them, right? Because you, you, you're either right for the job or you're not right for the job. You know, we should all be working together. I'm glad you said that because 
I think one thing that's really helped me push my way through and continue to push my way through while doing this is that I study the business side of things before I even put myself out there. You know, I study the business side of, of the whole industry, you know, like there's so many factors and things that we can't control. And I think that's why a lot of actors get down is like a lot of them just don't understand or know the business side of things. You know, like you're too tall, you're too short, you're not mm. dark enough, you're not light enough, you're you're too skinny, you're too big. There's so many factors that we can't control. And, you know, when they get told no, it's not personal. They're not saying you're not good. It's just like you just didn't fit what they were looking for. And a lot of times when that happens, like they'll remember if you if you leave your mark in the room, which I try to do every single time, they'll call you back for an audition for something else. And that's happened to me three times. I went to three audition, three different auditions, didn't land them, but had a casting director and director reach back out. Hey, six months ago, you auditioned for this. Uh, you know, you didn't put the role, but we thought of you for this. And then had me go audition for something else that they had. Yeah. And I ended up booking one of the three. I mean, I only booked one of them, but still, like, I still got booked for one of the three things I went out for. But they will always remember you if you leave your mark. So, like, I always tell people, like, at the end of the day, the business we're in is a business. It's mm -hmm. a business at the end of the day. Totally. And there's just things that we can't control and there's things we can control. You can control how prepared you are. You can control how you do. You just can't control the outcome of the factors that we can't control. Yeah, totally. Totally. I'm, I totally hear you. Um, yeah, what, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll, all John's links will be in the in the notes if people want to click on them and check them out. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to finish up with, John, or that I didn't cover or say, or is there anything you'd like to plug that you're in? Like, oh, there's a few things coming out oh. that you're in. or Yes, so I do have a... Uh... I do have a movie that's out. I don't know if you saw it yet, Conjuring Beyond. Um, before I get into that, um, because the title itself is very misleading. Everyone thinks Conjuring movies and they think like, you know, the big, big box office budget Conjuring movie. It's an indie film that I did. Um, so The Conjuring Beyond is about sleep paralysis and hypnosis, if, if you're familiar with sleep paralysis. just I think you just dropped out for two seconds. Just repeat, it's about street... Uh, sleep paralysis and hypnosis. Sleep paralysis, right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this was my very first big movie release. Um, it's on, if you're familiar with uh, Comcast, Xfinity, um, Apple TV, Prime Video, Voodoo, um, and it's also on DVD too. Cool. We just released it there, yeah. So that was like my very first big release. Congrats, man. Thank Congrats. you. You're doing well. Uh, so thanks for talking to us. It's been fun. I might like, hopefully we get to do it again and catch up on whatever else you're doing in the next couple of months and see how things are going. I think it's, uh, I think you're, Dude, thank you. I, you're very important to I the space. You to you. No, man, you're yeah. very important to the space. I think what you're doing is, is how do I say lead? You're, you're leading by like, it's lead by example. Like you wish people should be taking note of how you're doing it because it, it, not not only is it working i think it's the right way to do it it's to be nice Thank but you. be to hustle your ass off so yeah hats off to you i think yeah. you deserve deserve I, all this success thank you i appreciate it i mean and just like one more thing like going back to like what we were talking about earlier it's like when people think we're gonna like take each other's jobs it's like we're all ourselves we're all our own actors you know we all we all won't be going out for the same job. So it's like anytime anyone like has a question, I'm so happy to answer like, yes, like, you know, any advice or anything. So if anyone ever has like questions, like I love to answer questions because I know what it feels like to ask somebody and not get anything back. And then just left like confused on like what to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're all, co we're all coworkers in a way. Exactly. You know, like we're all, we're all, we're all coworkers. We're all in the same thing. And the thing is like, us as actors, we already get as much hate as it is from people on the outside looking in. So it's like, we shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing that to each other. We should always be supporting and uplifting and helping in any way that we can. Because um, at the end of the day, we're at, I think we're in the most competitive industry there is out there. It's by far the most competitive industry. People only have to go for Hands a job down. audition. Maybe people go for a job audition once in their life. We have to job audition every single week and never hear back. That's what it's like. Yeah, and never and that, back. And that can sometimes, for some people, be very like heartbreaking. Ah, oh, yes. Like not hearing anything back, you know. And I get that feeling. And I think every actor 
an aspiring actor and actress to like learn the business side of things because mm -hmm. that will that will help you push through the tough and hard times definitely. if you understand definitely business side of things yeah cool john this has been real man we're looking forward has. to Thank keep you. watching you i appreciate it oh, thank that, you so much and everybody yeah just reach out or send john some love or or just some smiley face emojis his links will be down below thanks john <laughs>